Hello and welcome to Wise Exotics. Uh, I'm your host Trevor. Today we'll be doing the end of the video log series of September of 2024. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Those returning, hope you guys had a good September. Um, if you hear any clicks, bangs, noises, whistles, and whatnot, there are plenty of birds in here and they like to make their presence known. I can try to talk over them as best I can, but they can be a lot louder than me. So apologies if it's hard to hear me sometimes. Now, uh, I do this video log series in hopes to record and review over time things that are going on within my collection, how it's progressing, things to note, or trying to isolate certain conditions or things that were beneficial. Now, that being said, uh, so far we have some good news, some bad news. Uh, good news, I actually won an Nepenthes Ovada. Now, Ovada is the kind of Sumatran cousin to Vichii, a pure species that is quite popular in cultivation. It feels the same ecological niche that Nepenthes vicii does in Borneo, but in Sumatra. It starts out yellow, squat, with flare and stripes. Very similar to vicii, but as it ages, it gets that more burgundy, port wine-colored aging, similar to a lot of Sumatra and Nepenthes. Why it behaves in such a similar trait? Well, it is thought to maybe be a distant relative or a convergent evolution strain of Vichii. You know, a Nepenthes species that developed either from the same origination as Vichii, possibly, or, you know, just a species that popped up from another strain that went in the same path of evolution and development. Now, that being said, um, the bad news. So far, I had uh, a hybrid have that stress uh, issue reoccur where it just freaked out. I'm not sure if it's due to the hot, cold, hot, cold <laughs> effects I've been having. I've had like normal days, which are cooler, and then all of a sudden I get these heat spikes or a couple of hot days. Um, I ha I'm tending to think that's the case because I've had more hybrids species, not pure species, react badly to variant temperature ranges. Uh, they tend to like it more stable, but where they are within their niche, uh, temperature range, say between like 50 to 80, they're fine. If it usually goes above 80, that's when I have some of my hybrids start to panic or have issues. Some people have it the opposite. That they can have hybrids and much warmer things and they have no problem, but I think it's the sudden change of temperature that is the trigger or cause of some of these issues. Now, for those of you who have been in watching my channel know I have a couple of hybrids from my friend Josh. Two of them, which are the olders, I call uh, J1 and J2. J1 is white with red stripes and green leaves. Uh, the other one, J2, is red variegated leaves. It's actually right there with red traps and white stripes. So its sibling J1, which is the white trap with red stripes, um, had that sudden occurrence where it just declined rapidly within 24 hours. Woke up in the morning, checked on it, and it was near dead. Um, I topped the, the main stem off because it looked like there was a healthy basil, but I'm not very... Uh, I don't have a good outlook for it, so I can hope it'll pass and push through, but till then, I'm kind of, you know, resigned to its fate. I, I can't do anything more than what I'm doing. I have placed it in pure water, I put it closer to the spotlight over the sink, hoping it would have a more direct light that way uh, to try to regenerate from. So we'll see how that recovery goes, and I'll note that on the next update if it push through. It usually takes about a week or two. Uh, if it declines further, then it's pretty much gone. Uh, the other one was my Car 0066 that I had for a while, which is a weird hybrid that always was kind of unstable. I had given it out to a gift to my mother. She gave it back because it started to get uh, black necrosis on the leaves and growth tip. So I've trimmed that up, cleaned it up, and hopefully it'll push through as well. Again, if not, it's the way of things. Um, that being said, the rest of the plants are doing quite well. I did find um, some of the leaves on some plants were just starting to deteriorate and whatnot in this area, so I did a bunch of cleanup, uh, trimming, and just trying to control the growth because I had a lot of growth on these little things. Um, same thing over here. I took all the plants out and did a big cleanup and growth, uh, you know, spread out, try to reorganize, plant tetris it. I'm trying to think how to word it. Um, just gardening, <laughs> uh, trimming off dead or old leaves, trying to free up space there so I could see what was going on and how the plants are doing. Now, 
I spoke about Ovata. Uh, typically, Ovata can be anywhere from 45 to 60. Uh, I actually got mine for 16.99, so it was a pretty good steal. Uh, Ovata, as you can see, this one. This is the specific clone 3919 from Barney Exotics. It starts very yellow with red stripes, very squat, ages to a burgundy. Whereas, say on some VCI, you can see some similarities: yellow, squat, striped. But ages more toward a yellow gold. So there's some interesting stuff there. I'd actually really would like to compare the genetics of those two species. Uh, see how they how similar they really are or how close they are. Almost all Nepenthes are technically related to each other, but it's over vast distance of generation, breeding, limited pool generation, or initial hybrid pools that can cause them to generate or create a species from my hybrid strain. It's really fascinating, actually. There's a lot of stuff to unpack when you start really digging into how these species have evolved or how they can just arise from a natural hybrid or whatnot. But this is over the course of thousands, if not a long time, let's just say that, <laughs> of generations of those breeding and whatnot and cultivating. Some of them can actually be derived um, Possibly from like in pure species bred with a hybrid and back and that actually added vigor back into the pure species uh, Genetic pool strain. There's a lot of little trace genetics here and there um, as an example uh, Berbigier is thought to have some of them turn a little red some people believe that those have Raja genetics in them Because Raja is found in a similar and or close by location So there is thought that there's some cross genetics that uh, reoccur However, when testing some of those same sites, uh, the difference actually seemed to be so far toward um, trace elements. Uh, very high zinc content with the red one. So if you want your Berbigia to get more red, put them in something that has higher zinc, like Canema. It's like Akadama, but more acidic. Anyway, um, let's see. So that's my good news, is I got a Novata. I talked about the two bad. Um, plants are all developing well. My focus so far has been on how the Vici are doing and developing. I thought uh, Taffy had a flower, but Taffy faked me and a bunch of others out. Uh, I had asked some friends who had been growing Vici specifically for a while. We thought he, Taffy had a flower. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Taffy's only like two or three. But um, Taffy is a very fast grower. That's that big leaf one right there, if you're new to my channel. Uh, Taffy is a pure VCI from Rodix Lowland, crossed with the famous Candy Dream. So its dad is pretty well known. A uh, bunch of my VCI actually have crossed with Candy Dreams now that I think about it, or have some relation to it, in, I would assume. Now, Pink Candy, which is the one right here with the big flare, uh, that one is developing its first trap on the new leaf. It's also pushing out another leaf, so it's quite vigorous. I was surprised to see. Um, my K3, which is right behind it, which is uh, one of the well-known female breeders from Mike Fallen, uh, is already pushing a trap. It didn't even seem to notice shipping and pushing out. So we'll see how that goes. Just kind of a quick overview of them. The Akasukin X Barrio is right here developing a nice reddish trap, so I hope to see that. I think this is the KXM. Yeah, KXM from Mike Fallen. Uh, that one's, I'm going to flip that around so I can see that better. That one also is developing a nice trap, hopefully. Uh, as you can see, Pink Candy's doing well. Its trap is on the other side. Naga's been doing perfectly fine out here also since I moved it out. Lingulata. Now right there, it looks like a dead stick, but it's not. There are two active basils on that. That is a Dubai I got in a trade. You can see the Cephalotus is still here, but I'd love to move and hide it around. That's the K3 developing trap. It's also got another one, I think, on the other side, or down there, possibly developing next. Um, my yellow VCI A developed this nice, cute little trap. Reminds me of VCI M. My other VCI A pushed a nice trap over here. I don't. I kind of want to shift that over just a little bit so its leaf and trap get more development. That's the little VCI A that was I found was entangled in with this one. Let's see, my VCIB, I'm getting this nice red stripe. Hoping that trap goes neat. 
because the last couple traps were green. Originally when I got it though, it was yellow. So I was like, maybe I'm not giving it enough light. Don't know. So here's taffy. That was almost like a flower spike. Inside had bubbles and we're all like, oh no, is it going to have a flower? So no, no flower. Taffy faked us out. <laughs> Look at this new trap. It's definitely got a red tendril. Maybe taffy will go red again. Originally taffy actually looked much like this, but then it started to get um, kind of a tan body with yellow stripes, and, or yellow flare and red stripes. Similar to its dad. Uh, this is actually the dual leaf 402 one. It just popped yesterday and it's been slowly opening. I've been happy to see how this one will develop. It's got another trap it's developing right in here. It's already starting to push up, so yay, we'll see that soon. My Clipiata that I got, the BE one, is doing fine. My other two, Seagrun, are doing perfectly okay. The Ovada. The red VGIA. I've come to call this one Crimson Candy just because of how red it gets. It is actually redder or more intense dark red. It It is almost like burgundy dark red. Or this one I've been calling Lemon Tart. Yes, I named my things after food. I'm sorry, that's just how I'm going to be. <laughs> I have food on the mind, especially desserts lately. That's the one thing that was weird with chemotherapy. Uh, I lost a lot of my flavors for taste when I was doing it, but sweets remained. I actually never had a sweet tooth until I had that, and I was just now kind of really enjoy sweets. It's kind of one thing that kind of remained behind during that whole process, but all the plants, they're doing okay. Um... Doing fine. I was actually really impressed with the white Rafflesiana. Look at these big leaf chumps it's getting. This is the one that was in the tank forever. Ah, I'm trying to find it. It had a new trap. There we go. Nice developing traps and whatnot. Uh, plants are all doing really nice in here. Bical. <laughs> you can actually see the fanged bical there. Grown in highland conditions. Some of these plants, you just kind of have to come over and go, can you not be friends? Uh, for those of you who remember Lemon Cherry, it finally had a new trap open out here in the open. Completely different. It lost its little inner diamond pattern, but it's actually getting those raft things, which are in its genetics. It's actually, I finally found it, uh, its old tag, and I really need to write it down or put it in a, like a printout tag or something. Um, but it's like four different hybrids of globosa or globosa. Uh, basically Viking. It's got uh, Black Miracle and one Raff Cross in it. So that's actually where these little fangs are coming in. It's actually from a Rafflesiana. Similar to this one, which gets speckles and whatnot. Uh, which is weird. So I've had some people say Raffs uh, get speckles for them or white variegation or they remain normal. So this one, my white Raff is normal leafed. And my speckled one actually gets speckles on the leaves. I thought it was a boulder mildew, but it's not on the top. It's only on the top, not on the bottom. I've sprayed them and tested them with neem oil. That's just an example of what I'm using. It's just neem oil. Uh, that can help with any sort of parasites and whatnot, and it usually keeps bugs off my plants that I don't want. <laughs> Flies, it doesn't really bother, but any of the pests, I don't really have a big problem with it, but I have issues with slugs every now and then, and that can also deter them a bit. Now, I did take all the plants out here, and I put a wick mat at the bottom of the tray. So you can kind of see that it's keeping, even if the tray dries out, the wick mat itself keeps some water and then evaporates a little more water. So it's just an added humidity bonus. That's kind of how I thought of doing it. So let's move over to the tank setup, shall we? Okay, so now we're in the tank setup. I was actually happy to see this. Check out that silver little line of glitter on these anthuriums. Only one's really getting it. No, I guess that one's also getting a little of it too. So this is Magnific Magnificum crossed with Crystallium Silver Blush. So I guess that's the Silver Blush genetics? I don't know. I'm not really too up on the anthurium game. Those were some gifts from my friend Ray. He sent with uh, some cuttings. But all the plants in here are doing really well. I haven't had any problems in the tank at all. You know, I find it more ironic that I have problems with hybrids, and yet my Diabolica is just thriving and not caring. <laughs> Something to be said about that when the hybrids are more sensitive than a Diabolica. Uh, 
Now, this is probably the greatest jump I've ever seen in Araja. So, I got this from Nepenthes God, I'd like to say last year. Actually, in September, I believe, um, of last year. So, this one's actually was a three-leaf little seedling that was about that size last year. Now, look how much it's grown. I've had this Raja, which is the Borneo Exotics for two or three years now and this thing's overtaken it in a year from that big now mind you this one had a bunch of basils and i've been trimming rooting and selling the basils off to those who wanted one because some people want raja i do have one more basil on it because that's just how this raja loves to do uh that basil's already spoken for if it does root though i i just want to be clear i don't want to give anybody hopes if another basil occurs I'll let y'all know, or, you know, you can always ask me, hey, any more basils on the Raja? Because sometimes I just have to pull her out and check. Uh, this is BE3152. It is a confirmed female. All of the Q clones were confirmed to have flowered as female. Now, with tissue culture and all that other fun stuff, will they remain that? I don't know. But the one that creates multiple basils, which is this specific clone at the 3152 lot, there are only four, uh was a female so yay let's see macrophylla clone t that thing is a tank it didn't even notice a heat wave at all now my clone 23 or bcp 1998 clone 23 uh it actually had a stress leaf and it reduced significantly during the heat wave so i was really worried but then it pushed this huge growth tip up so it has a more developed leaf like uh clone t now now, I did do a check on everybody's favorite macrophylla, the clone, or not clone, eh, the macrophylla G, as some have called it, or the one, I just call it Phoenix, because I don't know how this thing's still alive, it just keeps self-resurrecting. This is a seagrown specimen that, I, after tracing and talking to the person I originally got it from, is it actually from Jeremiah Harris. Jeremiah was actually really impressed to see how this thing is still alive. Um, this specific seed grown plant has had uh, a slug attack, it had stem rot, and then it got root rot, and I had to top it at the beginning of the year. Well, here it is like six or seven months down the road. It still has not root, but it is continuing to grow fine. It does not care. Uh, so I pulled it out, checked it with tweezers just to see how the roots were in. It doesn't have roots, but it's still growing. <laughs> I could not believe. I'm like, it's been like six months. You should have pushed roots. So I've re-added some rooting hormone to the bottom, hoping that would develop a little more uh, as time goes on. It's that little bug. Go away, little bug. Uh, but till then, you know, it's. I, I'm just going to bag it again because I was worried. Uh, the Velos has shown an exceptional development. Look at those red traps with yellow teeth starting to form. And again, I had this thing from uh, about the same size as that. So it was a really tiny Velosa seedling. Super tiny. But it's a, it is a sea ground specimen, but it's shown to be pretty hardy. It did not care about the heat wave at all. My eddy might have cared a little. The leaf did not shrink, but it looks like the trap had a bit of a size reduction. It's a little smaller than the one back there. Diabolica doing fine. It's got this nice developing big leaf i am super excited to see it push something from that because <laughs> you can see on a leaf that was a third that size it's got this nice well-formed diabolica trap down here a little bit of reduction but it, it's been doing pretty good she uh this is actually a female diabolica uh doing quite phenomenal in my collection last two or three years now actually i have a male coming in and i'll get more into that as time goes on so my Northiana is developing two growth tips on the same point. Like the leaf opened up and there are two leaf points on there. So that is the BE3357 or red Northiana. Right here is my seed grown one. Look at that leaf jump. Super happy. Also, um, let's see, uh, Ristolacoides. I have to say that right. It took me a lot of practice to say that, by the way, uh, correctly. Uh, this is one from Kuja Orchid. It is actually bred between Kuja's female and Jeremiah Harris's male. It is doing phenomenal. I mean, it only had two little leaves and it was this big, and that was last month, and it's put out six or seven leaves, trap jump, leaf jump, and I even sent it to the creature. He's like, whoa, this thing is growing fast for you. And I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I just leave it in a tank. 
Uh, the Bongsos. These are also from my friend Josh. Really dark on that one, actually. Look how dark that Bongso is. The other two have remained kind of the same coloration, but wow. Is that number two or number one? That's number three. Okay, is that the one with the basil? No, this is the number... Yeah, number one has the basil. I can see the basil here. Number two is the smallest of the two siblings. You can kind of... Trying to see. Ah, come on, number one. I'm trying to pull number one's trap out. Just, there we go. So you can compare the color between those two bongs. So, wow, look at the coloring difference. Very interesting. Oh, the Tampa Sissy had a nice fresh pop. So when Tampa Sissy opens, it actually has yellow teeth. And then they, from the teeth edge, darken from like a black. And then it spreads out to like a reddish color. And then it darkens to that kind of trap color, which you can almost not even see in this lighting. So, it's a fascinating specimen. I might be pulling this Rob out because this one had some nice big jumps. The Nebularum, I believe? Or, no, that's the Neb. Uh, the Nebularum is kind of doing its own thing. It really likes to hide its traps, whereas this Rob has more squat traps, but they're both pretty. I really like it. No stripes. But that's a rare occurrence even then on some of the uh, Robert Cantley eye. Um, let's see, the VCI Mulu is doing fine. I really like this one because it's got like a yellow heart shape already. So I'm hoping it gets squat with this kind of yellow peristone flared. Uh, a lot of VCI, let's not lie in here. There's, there's a lot of VCI. Um, my low is right here, still getting really dark traps. This is Clone 88 from Plants That Eat. The Truncata Mystery <laughs> that this one is is doing fine. The Arnardoi, doing okay. This is actually a new VCI I got from my friend Sean. So this is VCI Maraud X Candy X Candy Red. So I have some high, high, high expectations for this one. Uh, it's doing really well. Of the ones he showed me, this one had the largest traps with like a slight pink edge on the wings and body already. So I was like, you know, I, I'm vibing with this one. I'll, I'll take that one, please. And he said, sure. So I sent that one my way. Really awesome of him. Uh, Pudica, doing quite well. I actually saw that um, Flora had some seed-grown ones available again uh, for a bit. Yeah, so mine is one as well so it's doing quite well mine tends to be green and then starting to get the speckles on some of the traps that drop liquid out because that trap is so stout if you look in the back you can see kind of some purple speckles that's the main color most of these traps will get as they age but it is a very interesting species pudica is so far the only one that creates traps from its roots now, I have pulled it out, and I do check it occasionally, which probably ticks it off, but so far it hasn't shown any elevation to me, or uh, negativity toward me, checking the roots, moving it around to look in there. Uh, no basils yet, or I would let anybody know. I know I had several people inquire. Um, these VGI are doing really well. Palawanensis, so I really like this clone a lot. Look at that beautiful squat. It ages yellow with stripes. Yeah, it's a good clone. All right, yeah, it's a clone from BCP, to my understanding. Trying to push my Sumatrana out of the way. Cerecia is doing really good. Um, actually, let me see if I can pull that out without hurting anything. I was really happy to see this trap develop so well. There you go. Sumatrana in Highland Conditions. Look how pretty that is. I don't know if this is the red one. Uh, this is BE4540. It's just a Sumatra. I just wanted to see if I could grow one in Highland Conditions. And so far, it's been doing quite fine. I haven't had any problems with it other than initially getting the lowland to highland. Sh I'm calling the shock factor where it gets a little stressed. But then it pushes through just fine. Uh, this Trincata down here is getting a little bit of a coloring. So maybe it'll be a red Trincata. There's some sundews and the like. Ceratensis, uh, which is an ultra lowland, doing just fine in here. I'm really excited about this. Uh, this is the JBX Cobra. I'm getting really red already. Now, I was really impressed with this one. Look how big this trap is on this little leaf. 
super stout with a lot of stripes already. This prior trap is right here. Also a lot, a lot of stripes for such a little plant. Um, that is Maraud X Candy, or Maraud X Seek K crossed with Cobra. So that's Car 0207. Getting kind of, let's see if I can show it, kind of pinkish in this lighting. Michi ID, huge leaf jumps. Kind of impressed with that too. Uh, these are the 441 from Carnivore, Car 0441. Um, these three here, right there, uh, not this one, this is uh, Barrio Malaysian Tropics, Cross with Cobra, Car 0267, doing quite well. His stripes, and I can't complain. Uh, these three are the Big Mama crossed with Pink Candy that was crossed with Akazuka next Barrio. Look how red this one is. Like, it is keeping that red. Ah, uh, it is pretty. This one's staying more yellow. This one's red-ish with stripes, but very nice trap jump. Uh, I got these four from my friend Mike at Mike's Little Oasis. You just message him on Instagram. He's got a bunch of them. Uh, this one is a little special. This one was, I, I've been calling the butterfly effect of HEI. Uh, this one is the same as these three right here. Uh, this is VCI Pink crosses VCI Barrow number two um, from Premium Exotics last year, uh, 2023. So you can see that this one, this one, that one, and that one are all siblings, but quite a variance in coloration and traps and whatnot. I actually had this one first, then I got this one from Mike, and then I got these two from uh, Samantha. So all three of these are from my friend Samantha or Nepenthes Odyssey. Uh, VGI Hose Mountain X Barrio. Nice tall traps. Let's see, KX uh, Candy Stripe X Barrio. This one just started open. Look how red. Kind of like strawberry red. I have not seen a bad one of the Candy Stripe X Candy crossed with K. Or KX Candy Stripe X uh, Candy. There you go. No, that's B. -E. This one. Yes, one of these two. Uh, so K, X, Candy Stripe, X, Candy. So I have not seen a bad one of the bunch uh, yet. And I've, there are, this Grex has been done a few times, but they all seem to do pretty well. So this is another one of that Grex. That's a basil from a friend, uh, Nelson's. This is his first basil uh, off of his red one. So it'll be quite fascinating to see how that develops. Uh, Attenborough guy, doing quite well. No issues, throws traps out. They're red with yellow geekiness. Let's see. Yeah, that should cover everything uh, of the major ones. So the orange is Candy Dreams, which are really tiny seedlings, are doing really well. Um, I have a seedling from Desert West Carnivores that is, I believe, Belly Eye Cross with Suratensis. Uh, he mixed up the tags on me, and then he's like, no, no, the one I gave you is, I believe, the opposite. So, uh, I believe it to be Belly Eye X Suratensis or Suratensis X Belly Eye. Uh, I think one of the only hybrids still left in here is this one from, uh, Greenwood Exotics. It's doing fine. It's just kind of slow. Nothing wrong with that. I do tend to enjoy them a little slower because... Then I don't have to rush to move them around. Uh, I'm a seed grown from Carnivoro. Uh, plant A, X, B. Doing well. So, yeah. Um, tank's doing fine. All the main plants are doing well. If anybody has any questions, comments, and whatnot, please leave them in the comments below. Or, you know, if you have problems with your own plants, please talk to me on Instagram. Why is exotic? One word. And same little green owl as my YouTube. Best regards all, Trevor out.